Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I must confess, whenever I go to the airport, I really am in awe, especially when you go to a very big airport, of just the whole mechanism of what happens in an airport. Of course, each of us have our personal journey through the airport, check-in, security, uh, we're boarding the plane, finding, you know, finding our seat. And then of course our baggage has its own journey. Once we've gone through check-in, it disappears off in some system and it ends up at the other end when you kind of get off the aeroplane. And then there are of course the aeroplanes themselves and there are thousands, you know, I find just the whole mechanics of an airport just absolutely fascinating. And I must admit that when I'm kind of out on the uh, runway, I often do kind of crane my neck out the window to see what other aeroplanes there are. And I must confess also that I have been up to a few observation towers in my time to see the takeoffs and the landings. Well, why am I telling you all that? Because did you know that it's possible to track the aircraft that are flying overhead over your house using a Raspberry Pi? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Flight 209 are clear for Vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our Vector, Victor? Now, of course, a traditional way of tracking aircraft, and still an important way today, is using radar. But that's probably out of the reach of what people like me and you can do. You're probably not going to stick a radar dish on the top of your house. However, there is an alternative called ADSB. That's the Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. And that is basically a very short message that the aircraft itself transmits with some key information in it. So for example, the aircraft knows where it is because of GPS, it gets a GPS fix, it knows its velocity, it knows its own call sign, and it can send these short messages that are only 112 bits long on the 1090 megahertz frequency, and then the idea is that the airports and the air traffic control can also receive those messages and they are a backup to the traditional radar. But because they are unencrypted, people like me and you can also pick up those short messages. Now it turns out that you can pick them up using some models of the uh, DVB-T, so that's a digital video broadcasting T for terrestrial, so basically digital TV over terrestrial airways. Using a dongle for that, some of them can actually pick up those signals and then with the right software, you can process them and then you can build up a, a map of what's going on in the airspace above your head. Now that in itself is pretty interesting, but also what we know is there are services online that are already tracking loads and loads of uh, flights and give you information about all the flights that are going on in the world. And one of them is Flight Radar 24. Now before anyone asks, this is not a sponsored video and I have no connection with Flight Radar 24 at all, except for what I'll tell you uh, in a moment. Now, they have a special distribution available for the Raspberry Pi, and they give you a list of DVB-T dongles that work with their software, so that you can set up your own aircraft tracking uh, system, and then actually, optionally, you can connect to their server and upload the information of the aircraft that you are tracking, so that it gets added to their data. And if you do that, and this is what I was saying my connection is, you get a free subscription to their business plan, which is worth $500 a year. So I've done that and I've signed up, but that's it. It's just like anybody else who would do this and sign up. That's my only connection. So I've done it and I think it's really, really interesting. So I wanna just take you through quickly the steps to do that and to show you what you get once you've done it. So first of all, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. Basically any Raspberry Pi will do. If it's got an ethernet port built into it, that's probably gonna be the easiest for you. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. You're gonna need the right uh, DVB-T dongle. And as I said, they have a list of dongles available on their website. You're gonna need an antenna because these uh, are hard to pick up these quick burst signals, okay? And they can be up to 200 or more nautical miles away. So you need an antenna. And then you just need to basically set it all up. So you need an SD card and a power supply. And you set it all up and you then, uh, once it's all connected, you then have this system uh, running. So you need to download the uh, Pi24 distribution from Flight Radar 24's website, burn it onto the SD card, boot it up. There's a few things to sign up to connect to their services and that's it, you're up and running. Now the default setup is using Ethernet and DHCP. So basically 
it connects over ethernet and then it just gets an address for itself from your local router. Now it's possible to use Wi-Fi, which is what I've done because I like to be able to just stick it uh, anywhere that's near to where I want the antenna, and I'll talk about the antenna in a moment, and then have it talk over Wi-Fi to my uh, to my router. And also I'd like to have a fixed IP address. Now that's all possible. Uh, instructions are available on the website, but the initial, and the way I did it initially is just to use a default setup, and then you can start experimenting with different network configurations. All the instructions are there, it's not that hard. Now I did mention the antenna. Now because these planes can be 200, up to 400 nautical miles away, you do need an antenna, and that is best if it's outside. Now at the moment, my one's inside, and I have plans to put it outside, but when it's inside, I'm only getting planes that within 50 nautical miles of me. If you put it outside, particularly if you put it high up, you can get up to 400. Now there are some of the stations that are available, people who are doing this, they put their statistics available publicly on the internet, and you can see that some people are really getting some good uh, distances. Uh, mine's interesting because it's got a kind of a pattern which shows kind of the buildings and things around. So you can see that it's where there's free space, uh, no obstructions, it kind of gets better signal than it does in, in other directions. Now once it's up and running, you can connect to it either via a web browser or directly on your Raspberry Pi with a mouse keyboard and a monitor. I find it easier to connect to it using the web browser because I want to run my Pi headless because I'd want it to be somewhere near the window or where it goes out to the antenna, and I don't want to have a monitor and thing connected to it over there. So it's just basically got the USB for power onto it, and then of course the antenna. So once you connect to it with the web browser, you get a kind of get a status page that tells you what your uh, station is called, that you're connected up to the, uh, the, the Flight Radar 24 system, how many aircraft you're tracking. And if you click on the number of aircraft that are being tracked, it gives you a list of them. And then if you click on one of those, it takes you straight over to the Flight Radar website, where it then shows you that actual uh, plane and you can see it approaching your location and as it flies over and flies further away. So you kind of get to track it all that. And because you get the business subscription for free, because you're doing this, then of course you get loads and loads of details about the plane and all the other planes around it. And I must say, I've found it quite an interesting exercise and I really am pleased with how it's all worked. And it really does bring out the nerd in me when I want to kind of look at the statistics and the airplanes. And I do actually daily go and see how many airplanes I've tracked, or how many positions I've tracked, what distances I've got. And I certainly want to get my antenna uh, up higher onto the roof so I can get even further uh, and get kind of a better signal. So if you are in any way interested in a Flight Radar 24 free business plan subscription, or you are into kind of, you know, nerdy things like tracking planes, then this is a really good way of experimenting with this. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my email newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com and type in your email address. Please, if you want to hang around as well, then hit the subscribe button. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.